Yeah, and the reason I record, uh, Eileen, is that there's a YouTube channel where all most of the classes go that I teach uh, that you can check out for free. So if you miss a class and you want to catch up, you can watch the video. I don't know how many people do it, but it's available for people who okay. want it. Yeah. Um, so, and also because there's there's wisdom here and we want to capture it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right? Okay. Aren't you feeling yeah. better already? I can see, look at you guys as she adds her little yellow light. Look at, so I like the way you're doing the brushwork on the bottom. Now flip up, yeah, there you go. Kind of flip it up up so that it's soft there's a soft yep just like that exactly exactly you can even use your finger to push up push it up yep there you go there you go there you go see how it's kind of got a little uh, don't go that way go up go vertical up vertical because if you go if you go horizontal it'll flatten out and become a straight line oh okay you want it to be soft that's yeah there you go look at how that light little edge that gets exciting and you'll go all the way through. I wouldn't go all the way to the other edge of the painting. I'd, I'd stop about where the pier sticks out. Oh, okay. Um, Pat, okay, so let's see. Where do you need to stop? Don't go. Yeah, Pat, um, this is, if you, please. Yeah, yeah. So what you did, the reason it's too thin. The so what's too thin? thin uh, the vase. It's too thin. Okay. Tell me at the widest part of the vase, how many, if you were to take the height of the orange and put it across, how, how many orange heights is it across at the widest part of the vase? And when I say okay. that from here to here. See where I just, I drew the line where I want you to measure it. Oh, okay. It's about maybe a little over one and a third. Yeah. How, how wide is yours that you've drawn? Two inches. God, I hate numbers. <laughs> it, it's too thin. I know, I know. I know. It's too narrow. <laughs> okay, my. So that's all you need to know. It's two inches across, and my. Oh, and also, I think my base is three, so that's right. one and a third, right? Um, no, that's one and a half. No, that's one and a half. No, it's two. It's it's if you just measure, you don't have yeah. So just measure, right? You're, oh, you're okay. It measure the top and bottom of the orange that you have drawn. I also want you to notice something else. The orange that you have drawn, if you go up one, here and I'm going to edit this so you can see this. Um, from here to here, if I go up one. What's this do? So look at two things. I just showed you what one orange height is, where it sits on the base. Oh, I thought it was three times as high. You, uh. The vase, I'm talking about at the widest part. Oh, 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 okay. Look at that and you'll see your, your base is too high and it's too narrow. Okay. Yours goes like this. Oh yeah, way too. Oh yeah, Pat. Your vase is way too high. You'll see. Look, when I measure three, one, two, three. Look at this. Look at I measured three. I measured three oranges on your drawing. Look at where your where it comes on your drawing. Oh, I was doing from the bottom of the base. That's, um, it's not three. 
you listen the vase the orange is next to the the orange is in front of the vase that makes it one big object okay you can't separate those two things okay right they are in relation to each other okay you so got it you're, so the vase there goes the vase <laughs> yeah the i hope vase, i don't regret putting that vase in there. the vase is completely off it's way too high okay and what you need to do is look at the thing that I, so I'm going to show you where, yep, that, what I'm showing you is what the height of three oranges is, including the orange itself, two, three. So you need to start by using the height of that orange. But you use the height of the orange. Okay. That's, yeah, where, that's right. where I lost. Correct. Yeah, right. I know. So we just got, I, I don't know what happened there, but um, it's like you added an extra orange or something height. on. Top. <laughs> no, I started my measurements on the vase at the bottom of the vase instead of the bottom of the orange. You have to start it that you have to start what's in the front that you can see the whole thing. And also what's the lowest, mm -hmm. but what's in front is what we start with because that's how we, we, so I'm going to make my marks. And then everything else is related to that thing that we have measured. This is good practice for you. It's good for you to remember this stuff. Yes. It just takes me a long time to remember things. Oh, very nice. I mean, that's beautiful. Look at that, you guys. So pretty. Yeah. Wow, that's glowing. <laughs> and then you want to add, like maybe since you've still got a little on your brush, scrub oh. a little bit into the, the you know, just keep it where it is. Not too much water, oh. just, just paint. You're going to kind of blend in a little bit into the reflection, right, of that light. So look at, now you might want to return to your source and see how the light is hitting the water. The lightest part, right? The very bright light. Oh, to the original picture? Go take a look at the original picture and see how the light is like hitting. Okay. Add in a couple of streaks of that light. It kind Not of in the sky, up. in the water. Yeah. 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 So add a little more up higher? Nope. Low, in the water. Oh, in the water. Right. Some of this same color? Well, isn't it there? A little bit, yeah. So add it in. Okay. Like if it's on the sky, in some way, it's going to be in the water. Now, okay. usually reflections are slightly darker than what is happening in the sky. So you'll like, that's why I'm like, just take the leftover bit on your brush and kind of drag it through. Sideways or up and down? No, no, no. Kind of, in, it kind of... Um, Look at the how the sun hits the hits the hits the sky, and then from the, from your source, isn't there information on how the light hits the water? I mean, how, it's I see you of, added lights in there. I see you added light lights into your water. Yeah, I did sort of. But you, did you not know? You just did it randomly without thinking about where it is. Okay. Well, I I saw the photograph itself didn't reflect as much white or as much light right okay on it. so you want to bring in a little bit where those lights are as they're coming down you want to yeah. bring in just a little bit more not a ton but a few bright wiggles not lined like this but like zigzagging down zigzagging yeah because it seems like there's some over here and then a lot yep. there. So add in those places. You've got that on your brush. Go ahead. There I see it. Okay. Subtly, subtly. Francesca, how's it going for you? I'm measuring. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, you guys. It all starts with measuring. Okay, so while you all are working, I'm going to get a little work done too. But if anybody needs help, you let me know. Okay. Thank you. I've got a limited time. <laughs> I'm a little bit panicky. Let's see.
Yeah, there we go. That's adding some more depth to it, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look nice? The answer is so simple. It's always many, it's like kind of knowing the tricks of painting. Mm -hmm. Well, just knowing, yeah, depth, that whole thing with depth and how to play with color to make it. Well, the nice thing about the glaze, it pushes everything back, but it unifies it a little bit. And most of the time I won't be painting. I mean, you'll see me painting, but I'll be painting something similar to what you guys are painting. But because of the situation, So give me a shout, guys, as you're working. When you're ready for me to look at your drawings, when you're ready, ready for me to look at your drawings, when you're ready for me to look at your the next stage. I think for you, Eileen, the next stage is going to be taking some cadmium red and sprinkling it through the leaves and the trunks to give your trees a little bit more brightness in places. Okay. Yeah. That's what that bright red cadmium is. Red. I think I do have cadmium red. Yeah, you, yeah you'll, you won't miss that one. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty vibrant. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of that magenta left that I can wash that other painting with. Right now. <laughs> that other one. Good now. Let me know in the video. <laughs> make the video because that's a very fun thing for people to see. I'm really bummed I didn't think to record it. It's a that's one of those things that I think students can learn a lot from. Yeah. Well, the other one is having the same issues that this one did, where it's just. Okay. Fall in flat. I know that the solution is just uh, paint it, just uh, glaze it hot pink. Okay. <laughs> that will fix a lot of ills. It won't fix mm. everything. It might create a couple new problems, but then at least you're kind of out of the rut and you can move forward. Yes, that's that's the thing. I'm yeah. not really. So I think we could probably do some good work together. I think that's why I wanted to. I always like to give people a free class just to get a feel for it. Um, the way I like to teach is to really impart as much technique as possible, right? That's why mm -hmm. you're coming. You've already, maybe you have maybe you want to paint, maybe you've never painted, maybe you paint all the time. But what you want is help, right? With the problem. Yes. Well, so, just get out of a, out of a rut. It yeah. doesn't look like I have cadmium red. That's so odd. It's such a familiar, I think I, it's coming back to me years ago. I must have had it in oil paintings or something, but I don't see. Don't have it. All right. So you've got that me, natural red. Let me look at my little. I have a little set of. No, brilliant red. Brilliant red is close. Crimson. Definitely not crimson. Okay. I have um, a brilliant red. Okay. 
and an and a naphthol crimson. Naphthol. Um, I think the brilliant red is going to be what, the one that's and just regular crimson. The one that's closest to orange will probably be brilliant. Red. Yeah, the the rouge. It's called brilliant red. It looks like it's a little more toward. Yeah, the crimson is definitely more towards maroon. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's not red. What do you think of reds? Cadmium red. Can you write that down? Cadmium red. You gotta get cadmium. Okay, I will get that on the list along with batter brushes. Okay, so we have brilliant red. Yeah. So now you wanna look at in that little area where some sort of they're mid-tones. They're not exactly the lightest, but they're bright in that little card that you like. Mm -hmm. Add some of that in places on the trunk and in the branches and oh. some of the trees. Not everywhere. You want to maintain some of the darks. Yes. But you want to add some of that hot red, you know, that beautiful orange, brilliant red in. And I should use a thinner brush. No. Well, no, you should use the same brush. That big, the fat one? Okay. Yeah, that, that is a thin brush in my view. In my view. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fattest brush. Mickey, how you doing? Are you jumping back in? Yeah, I was in a very good flow and I took a little break to run some errands and eat lunch and I'm back at my collage work. Fabulous. Join us and let me know as you're, as you're working on stuff and me thinks, guys, do you know Peggy? Peggy is my designer for all my cards. Uh, any big design project I need, she does for me. She's in Portland. She's very multi-talented. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> multi, amazing artist. Really wonderful. Anyway, she's already been in class for with Lotto for a couple of hours. There's a class before mine that uh, with another teacher that's pretty fabulous too. Um. I'm going to stop for a few minutes. Let me move on to this. All right, guys, I am going to uh, rinse out my brushes. I'll be right back. The red and the mm -hmm. Where's the I have a second. Might be round rather than flat. Oh, yeah. Look at the other. Okay. I want to see where, but before I do anything else, I want to see where everybody is. So coming over here. I'm going to flip it. Oops. Oops. I'm gonna back here. Uh, see how much more bright it's looking, Eileen. Now yeah. you're now you're starting to get some of that. Now I can see you're starting to have a little fun. Yeah, putting red in my tree branch. And also from... notice in that card that you sent over how yeah. the red is on the ground as kind of a, a mid-tone shadow it's yeah. like or like the light it's like it's not the darkest which is purple but it's kind of this medium shadow so you might try and lay like if you're figuring out where the sun is coming from you might lay a little bit on the ground too just to give yourself a little variation between medium and do you know what I mean when I say mid-tone and yeah 
Yeah, yeah mid -tone and light. Dark. so there are dark the dark. and lights, and then there are mid tones. The mid tones are in between. They're a little bit harder to see because they're more subtle, right? They're sort of dark. They're sort of like you know, they're kind right, of right. They kind of disappear. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to have you, if you wouldn't mind for the camera, glaze that second painting. I will. Tell me when, and I will I just will go to town on that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> just tell me when. Say, Eileen, it's ready. All right. Well, you look like you're having fun, so I don't want to wreck the flow there. So keep well, doing I'm, I'm very excited about putting red in my trees. <laughs> it's pretty. Red is a beautiful color. Okay, so what I'm going to have Eileen do is a, a wash or a glaze um, of a very vibrant color that's not in this painting already. And that she pretty much has every color in this painting, except for that hot quinacridone magenta. Um, we're going to watch how laying this down will add depth to the painting. She may not keep it everywhere. We may have her rub it off in places, but... It's going to kind of unify and also sort of brighten everything. <laughs> You're going to glaze every single one of your paintings after this. Right? I know. Yep. <laughs> go around the house and yeah. Pull it it is really addictive. <laughs> it is, right? It does so much work. It does so much of the heavy lifting. What way do you see this? Like this is really, really the only thing your paintings were missing is hot pink. Who knows? <laughs> Everybody needs some hot pink. Yeah, everybody needs hot pink in their life, I guess. Uh, Quinacridone magenta is a new one for me. Uh, I haven't used it very much, but I'm using it in this commission that I'm working on, and it's insane. I mean, it's like this vibrant, I mean, there's nothing shy about this color. It's absolutely nuts. I love that color. Isn't it beautiful? Do you you use it quite a bit, Peggy? I feel like I feel like um, that. Your... Yeah, I use that or alizarin crimson. Yep, alizarin. Yes, which is a. I love also the quinacridone nickel azo gold. That's like so good. So good. Yeah. So I kind of have always been glazing my collages, but not with paint. Um, my one of my styles of collage is where I just go crazy and cover a piece of paper with just randomness. And then to make it cohesive, I use uh, 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 pattern tissue, you know, because that's like an off-white or it's not off-white, but it's like that. It's kind of like Nicoazel gold. Um, and then I just cover the entire collage with that and it brings it all together and makes it look like a cohesive background. So Are it's kind of cool. Are you doing that today? But also gives it depth. No, I'm not doing that today. Um, right. Sorry. And all of my... Uh, fabric pattern stuff is in the basement okay um, it, we but, would love to see that if you ever have time like to yeah that, I would love to see that that Leslie Yates actually has one of my pieces that utilizes that technique oh yeah yeah it's a and so then you can collage over the background and then the background isn't competing with the subject in the front I love it no I, I see exactly how it's working I love yeah. it it's like using like white to kind of edit but in this lay in this soft way where everything comes through. Oh my God. That's Your trees are looking amazing with that over it. I know. Isn't that amazing? Look at it. And I, I just, they're popping. I did not know how to move forward with these paintings. They've been Ooh. in the corner for well, Jesse's wedding was five years ago or so. Never six, put well, baby well. in the corner. I just put <laughs> these two paintings in the corner. <laughs> uh, oh my god I'm, ha I'm, I'm hanging out with a, a lot of college friends uh, who spent a lot of time at the Catskills Jewish college friends <laughs> ah. so they really know the whole don't put baby in the corner thing oh, oh my gosh, gosh yes. Yes. dirty dancing yeah dirty dancing it's a classic it's a classic Yeah, beautiful. So notice how as she's, and thank you for doing this for the recording. I think this is a fabulous, it feels really like a ballsy move, but it's not really. I mean, it uh, is, but look at how it brings everything else together. Yeah, it's, it's 
very fun. <laughs> it darkens, but it also brightens and that it brings some kind of like electricity to the composition. So it's when you bring, brings it alive. Yeah. So when you put it over the yellows, it makes them a little bit oranger and some areas oranger and, and then it makes your brights pop. When you put it over the greens, it neutralizes them a little bit, which is kind of what you need to do with landscape greens. Yep. Yep. And now you see why you need a bigger brush. <laughs> I need a bigger brush. Boy, do I need a bigger brush. This is possible. Oh, those are beautiful. At least my daughter was able to identify which friends I sort of tried to paint in the, at the tables here. Yeah. Said, oh, there's Becky. I said, oh, yay. She could tell who it Recognize was. it. There you go. Yeah. But then that was it. These folks have no bodies. See, I just ended up there. Well, you can't. They're just floating heads. Yeah. Well, you can't. I mean, I thought they were just lights. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the table. I just, I just put this in the corner. I just didn't. I don't know. I liked the water. I think you need these people, and I like that. I mean, it's in a distance, right? You don't see all the detail. Right. Exactly. Right. I but like that everything water. in your painting has to be at the same level of detail because you want other things to stand out more than other areas it certainly doesn't bond yeah it certainly does not look um oh my god i like how the water looks when you put yeah. the look at that yep yep and then so you're going to do the same thing you know you'll go back and pop out little bits of yellow and then what we're going to do is uh, so i think the next thing we'll do with you eileen is we'll have you be working on foreground stuff Right, which is really the, the thing that's at the bottom of the painting is closest, which means it should have a little bit more detail. As okay. Peggy was so rightly pointing out, it's true, Peggy, it's not problematic at all. They look fine. It all looks fine. Like it totally reads as a subject with people in it. Um, but where it's a little bit flat is in the front because the front has the exact same level of detail as the back. Oh. So if you want to give more, oh yeah, even on the sidewalk, it looks good. God. Magenta. Who knew? Who knew? Who yeah, knew? really. That's what you were saying, David. The, the parking lot or the, mm -hmm. the platform there. Hey, Leah. Yeah. Should hey. I um, <laughs> stick with the, the game plan and do my backup and or my underpainting in magenta? Um. Do you want to? I don't oh, know. I don't think it work very well. <laughs> You got to do it. Um, Jack, are you? Well, oh, yeah, I think, you know, we didn't really, we haven't really practiced underpainting, so you have options. Um, you could do it as a black and white. You could do it as black and white. You could do it as like a red, you know, a red or an orange. Um, maybe if you're painting an orange, a lemon, and an apple, you know, I might, here, I'll do it for you. I'm going to turn your photograph into a black and white. Yeah, I did that. That's okay, nice. so paint us. Do, I would do a black and white um, underpainting. And then we'll glaze it. Are you going to work in oil or acrylic? Oil. oil. Okay, do a black and white underpainting. I think that is the best way to handle that. Okay. There definitely is not much really dark in this picture. Well, there are some darker, there are more darks than others. You want to push the darks a bit. Your shadows you should mean, be dark. By that, do you mean make them darker than they look? Yeah. Did you look at the black and white? Uh, I did not. Can you send it over? Yeah. Send it over. It all happened to there it is. And you're like, you look so happy there. <laughs> like, that like, it's just really cute. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording here. Excellent. Wow.